This is Alexander Dunn with Planning Better Bike Adventures Using Google Maps, part two. So you have put in your point of departure. I'm using Seattle, Washington. You have put in your destination. I'm gonna go ahead and use Spokane, Washington for this example. And you've selected your mode of transportation. So Google knows that I'm gonna be trying to ride my bicycle between these two locations. If you need help with this, go back and watch part one of this video series. I now have a bike route. Now, Google is giving me some very interesting information about this route that could prove really helpful as you're doing some planning. The first thing, of course, is, is my total miles, 346 miles. It's estimating that this is going to take me 31 hours. Uh, if I assume that I can bike five hours a day, well, I do a little math and figure out that this is all of a sudden a six-day bike trip. Uh, if I can bike 10 hours a day, do you think I could do this trip in 10 days? Well, that's based on your fitness and how you do, but that's going to help me kind of start to think about how long I'll be out there. The other really helpful thing that Google automatically gives me is this little squiggly line over here. It looks like a bad arrhythmic heartbeat is actually showing me my elevation gain and my elevation loss over the course of the entire trip from Seattle to Spokane. It's telling me that my lowest point on the trip is going to be 26 feet above sea level. That's probably right down at the port of Seattle. And I'm going to end up in more, uh, excuse me, I'm going to reach as high as 2,631 feet at some point along the trip. The other thing it's showing me is where the climbs are going to be along the way. With this steep gradient going from way down here to way up here, that's showing me that that's going to be a monster climb. And if you notice, as I slide this little white dot over my elevation line, it's actually going to slide a little white dot over my trip route. And I can actually figure out exactly where this total heartbreak hill is going to come and where I'm going to be sweating and working the hardest to get up over it. And of course, no surprise, if you know Washington State, it is going to be the Cascade Range and one of the passes from the west to the east over the mountains, in this case, Snoqualmie Pass paralleling I-90. It's also going to tell me that over the entire course of the trip, I'm going to gain up arrow 10,925 feet, and I'm going to lose 9,222 feet. Now, while that might sound like an even Steven, what it means is that all this work going up the mountains, I'm going to go blasting down a huge hill right around here. And if I remember, if I want to find out where that is, I need to zoom out so I can see more of my route. And when I slide this over, I'm going to see a little white dot moving. And that looks like right in here. Now I can actually zoom in. We'll center that up and zoom in and see where that hill is going to come. And it looks like it's going to be happening right around Vantage, Washington, all the way down towards Hanford uh, National Monument following along Wanapum Lake. So I get some real info information about uh, my route and the elevation loss and gain using the cycling feature on Google Maps.